It isn't easy to become a fossil. The fate of nearly all living organisms is to compost down to nothingness. In order to become a fossil, several things must happen. First, you must die in the right place. Only about 15% of rocks can preserve fossils, so it's no good keeling over on a future site of granite. In practical terms, the deceased must become buried in sediment, where it can leave an impression, like a leaf in wet mud, or decompose without exposure to oxygen, permitting the molecules in its bones to be replaced by dissolved minerals, creating a petrified copy of the original. Then, as the sediments in which the fossil lies are carelessly pressed and folded and pushed about by Earth's processes, the fossil must somehow maintain an identifiable shape. Finally, but above all, after tens of millions or perhaps hundreds of millions of years hidden away, it must be found and recognized as something worth keeping. Only about one bone in a billion, it is thought, ever becomes fossilized. If that is so, it means that the complete fossil legacy of all the Americans alive today, that's 270 million people with 206 bones each, will only be about 50 bones, one quarter of a complete skeleton. That's not to say, of course, that any of these bones will actually be found, bearing in mind that they can be buried anywhere within an area of slightly over 3.6 million square miles, little of which will ever be turned over, much less examined. It would be something of a miracle if they were. Fossils are, in every sense, vanishingly rare. It has been estimated that less than one species in 10,000 has made it into the fossil record. Moreover, the record we do have is hopelessly skewed. Most land animals don't die in sediments. They drop in the open and are eaten or left to rot down to nothing. The fossil record, consequently, is almost absurdly biased in favor of marine creatures. About 95% of all the fossils we possess are of animals that once lived mostly in shallow seas.